In a previous episode, we covered the largely forgotten U.S. expedition to Korea in 1871, caused after a massacre of an American merchant crew some years previous. But this wasn't the first time that the nation would be invaded in an effort to open it up to Western powers. Yet, unlike similar efforts in Japan, Korea managed to actually beat back this invader and prolong their isolationism for another decade to come. This is the French Invasion of Korea. Western missionaries started arriving in Korea at the start of the 19th century, largely through the limited trade routes with Jin China, and with missionaries stealthing their way across the border into Korea proper. Bishop Simon Francais Bernot would be appointed as the head of the Korean Catholic Church in 1856, having a congregation of roughly 17,000 Koreans that had converted. Originally, the government had turned a blind eye to the expansion of the Catholic Church in their nation, but that changed quickly after Hunsion Taoin became regent in 1864. When he took power, Taoin was determined to reform the government and strengthen their central control. He would lead an anti-corruption campaign, disciplined the royal clans, and he increased taxes on the aristocrats. While these economic reforms weren't particularly successful, his foreign policy was purely isolationist, and he forced through actions to isolate his nation from the rest of the world, and this included a suspicion and hostility towards the Catholic religion. These policies created a swell of patriotism and unity within Korea, but it was massively stalled any potential industrialization, and heavily limited its economic abilities outside of the limited Chinese trade. In January of 1866, Russian vessels would arrive off the coast of Korea, demanding that they open up their ports and give residency rights. The Christians within the court came to Taoen with a proposal of a potential alliance between the French and Korea against the Russian aggression. Taoen agreed to the meeting, but this ended up being a ruse, and when Simon Bernou entered the capital to discuss terms, he would be captured and executed, with a greater roundup of French priests and converts starting after the execution. The reason behind the crackdown on Catholic members was largely by fearing that similar unrest that occurred in China would occur in Korea, such as the Taiping Rebellion, a rebellion that was largely fueled by Christian favor, and a fear that Western nations would use the greater acceptance of the religion as a pretext for invasion. It was also feared that the crop failures of 1865 could become the basis for greater adoption of the religion. Roughly 10,000 Koreans would be executed from this crackdown, and all but three French missionaries would be as well. In June of 66, a Frenchman by the name of Félix Radal managed to escape and fled to Yanti in northeastern China. Here, the French Far Eastern commander, a Rear Admiral Pierre Gustave Rosé, got word of the massacre and became determined to launch a punitive expedition against the Koreans. He would get the backing of the French consuls within the Far East without consent from the mainland, but he would be limited to the men that he had on hand. Due to the lack of information about Korea, even including navigation charts, Rosé conducted a multitude of sovereign expeditions focused primarily around the Korean capital of Seoul. From these, he concluded that a direct attack against the fortified capital was unwise, largely due to his limited force of 1,000 men and large hauled ships that couldn't easily navigate the shallow Han River. Instead, he opted to occupy Gaina Island, which commanded the entrance to the Han River. Taking the island would block the waterway to the capital during the harvest season and hopefully would be enough to enforce his demands on the Koreans. Rosé would arrive off the coast on October the 14th, landing 140 men at the coastal town of Dokonsonri, and began a march overland towards Kawando in the center of the island. By the 16th, the city would fall with limited fighting, with the Korean militia and civilians fleeing to the mainland. For the next week, the French forces would be reinforced to 400 men with even more fusiliers. 
They engaged in nearly a dozen skirmishes surrounding Galanda, taking lightly defended villages and forts along the main roadways to the east and south. Within Kalando itself, they would find a large quantity of silver and munitions, as well as nearly 300 volumes of the Royal UA books, a very lengthy series of written records about the Yonsan dynasty over the centuries. These, as well as some other artifacts, would be transported back to mainland France, with the books only returning to Korea in 2011 on a renewable lease. On October the 26th, a reconnaissance party of 160 would land on the mainland, to the south of the mont fortress, the main fortification that lay along the roadway towards Seoul. Here, the Koreans laid an ambush for the French, firing upon them as they neared a forward gate, inflicting three dozen casualties before being driven back into the fortress proper. Cannon were drawn up to bombard the fortress, but Korean reinforcements were fast approaching from the southeast, and the French retreated off the mainland. At the same time, rumors had spread of a large Korean army quickly advancing through southern Ganwa towards the occupied territories. To confirm the reports, 120 men moved towards Chuntunsa, but once again had entered right into an ambush. The area seemed abandoned, but Korean musket fire inflicted heavy damage to the French column, forcing them to retreat. With a fast approaching army that far outnumbered his own, Rose called off the expedition and would leave the island by November the 12th. While he attempted to claim a great victory for his minimal gains, it wasn't enough to appease the European residents in China, and they called for a full-on invasion the following spring. Rosé did draw up for a future invasion, but word reached him that his men and ships were to forestall any future conflict and return to the French mainland, in part due to the French losses from their intervention in Mexico. This campaign, while ultimately minor and with relatively limited bloodshed, would prolong the Korean isolationism for some time. But as we always know from history, you can only hide for so long before one way or another, you are forced to change course. <laughs>